First of all, a good afternoon and uh, welcome to NJIT. And you're in the home of NJII, the New Jersey Innovation Institute. This is ordinarily their Agile Strategies Lab where they engage business and industry and do the work for which is intended the establishment of NJII. So today is the Board of Overseers Excellence in Research Award Ceremony. The Excellence in Research Award at NJIT is an incredibly significant honor, which will be bestowed today on three very hardworking individuals. Our university now conducts approximately $160 million in research activity each year, and we are global leaders in such fields as solar research, nanotechnology, civil infrastructure, really resilient design, tissue engineering, traumatic brain injury, cybersecurity, and many others that are so critically important and contribute to the quality of life in this country and beyond. So we are so fortunate to enjoy the work of these three individuals and the contributions they are making to the improvement of the quality of life. It is my great pleasure to greet those of you who are present, as well as viewers who are joining us via the internet. Video of today's ceremony will also be viewed and available on the NJIT new website. You may have noticed our new website, very interactive. It's almost an intelligent website. We're joined today by several individuals who have contributed greatly to this event throughout its history. I would like to acknowledge them before going any further. First of all, past winners of excellence in research uh, is Cam Surkoff. There's Cam. Cam Surkoff, 2009. Uh, I didn't see David Rothman. Is David here? David Rothman, 2010. We always see Hyam Grable, and I learned about the temperature in the swimming pool just now, 2011. Dr. Reggie Farrow, 2012. Sam Mitra, 2014. And Hyman Wang, I saw Hyman. Thank you, 2015. Uh, we are also joined this year as winners of the research prize for the Yingwu College of Computing, Dr. Chase Wu, thank you, and uh, Newark College of Engineering, uh, Meng, Meng Chu Zhao. Where's Meng It's not here. Thank you. Additionally, I'd like to welcome the following members of our Board of Overseers, John Seesholz, Chair, Norma Clayton Thomas, Emil Herkett, Karen Fryer de Sousa, Nick DiNicolo, Jordan Yu, Rich Mays and Marjorie Perry and Edge Smeltz. I would also like to thank the committees, who, the committee that worked on the selection of the research winners. Emil Herkett, our Provost and Senior Vice President Fadi Deek, our uh, President of NGI, Don Sebastian, and our Vice uh, Provost for Research, Atom Dewan. A round of applause, please. Given the quality and scope of the research conducted at NGIT, it is a challenge to choose from the many deserving candidates for this recognition. This year, we will honor three faculty members whose work merits distinction. They are Dr. Edward Dreisen, um, distinguished professor in the Otto York Department of Chemical and Materials Engineering. Dr. Dreisen's work in propellants, explosives, pyrotechnics has important applications relating to propulsion for space travel and delivering large payloads as well as neutralizing anthrax. Dr. Dale E. Gary, distinguished professor in the Department of Physics and the director of Owens Valley Array in Big Bear, California. Dr. Gary studies the effects of solar bursts on cellular technology. Dr. Fazan Nadim, professor of neurobiology in the Department of Biological Sciences. Dr. Nadim explores how synaptic dynamics contribute to the neural activity and can lead, can, can lead to disorders such as Parkinson's disease. The recognition bestowed upon Professors Dryden, Gary, and Nadim today is the results of their prodigious talent and deep commitment to cooperative interdisciplinary efforts among colleagues in academia and industry. These efforts are leading to many breakthroughs that greatly improve the quality of life for many. 
You will learn much more about the incredible work of these three outstanding professors shortly, but please join me in offering them our congratulations. Gentlemen. I would now like to invite Dr. Atam Dewan, Vice Provost for Research and Development, to the provost, to the pro podium. He's, he is in this. Good evening. Thank you very much, President Bloom. Uh, I would start uh, with the notion that uh, NJIT has a very strong and growing research enterprise with the faculty working and pursuing research in cutting edge basic, application based, and the translational research. And many of them are pioneers in their respective fields. I'm very grateful to NJIT Board of Overseers for selecting three distinguished faculty for honoring them with the Excellence in Research Prize and Medal, as President Bloom mentioned. Uh, usually, NJIT awards one individual uh, honoring him or her with the prize and medal. But this time, this was so exceptionally challenging task that the Board of Overseers endorsed awarding three uh, distinguished faculty, uh, the research prize and medal. This itself is a testimony of the strength and the growing research at NJIT with all-time highest annual research awards and expenditure. It is my honor to introduce our three distinguished faculty for their leadership and very significant achievements in their respective research fields. Dr. Edwin Region for engineering design, Dr. Dale Gary for physical sciences, Dr. Farzan Nadim for life sciences. It's my privilege to first introduce to you John Schichel, a 1959 NJIT alumnus and chairman of the Board of Overseers. Uh, during this evening program, John will be joining President Bloom in presenting the 2018 NJIT Overseers Excellence in Research Medal and our honorees. Thank you, Tom. It is again my honor to be participating in this ceremony. I've had the pleasure of doing it over the last four years as uh, chairman of the overseers. And uh, it is really, I think, a highlight of the overseer program to see such talent being recognized. And as an alumnus, to see the talent that's a part of our university and leading the f effort to find new knowledge to cure problems that the people of our state and our country are dealing with. So um, this year, Drs. Uh, Dreitzen, Gary, and Nedham have accomplished in their very notable careers real milestones. And that's why, as Tom has already said, it was such a challenge to uh, make this award. And, and it could only be done by giving it out to all three of you. Really excellent, really excellent work. And um, this has been the culmination of 11 years of Overseer's Awards. And as, as you've met some of our previous award winners, you can see that this is really important to the Overseers and to the university. So at this time, in recognition of the extraordinary creativity, I'd like to call you and Tom to come back and carry it forward. Thank you, John. I'm honored to introduce our first awardee, 
This evening, Dr. Edward Regent, Distinguished Professor of Chemical and Material Engineering. His research laboratory is highly recognized research resource for many federal agencies and corporations. His research is supported by many federal agencies and industries such as NASA, ONR, U.S. Army, AFOSR, Teledyne, Philip Morris, Bristol Myers, and others. He is a world-renowned expert and widely recognized authority on metal combustion. Professor Dreesen's accomplishment and finding of his laboratory and his students have established a reputation for NGIT in the practical and applicable fields of reactive materials. The reactive materials are those that when they are burned, they create enormous amount of the energy and has several outreaching applications. Dr. Dreesen has authored and co-authored more than 200 50 peer-reviewed journal papers, several book chapters, and he has graduated 17 PhD students at NGIT. He serves as an associate editor for the International Journal of Energetic Materials and Chemical Propulsion, as a member of the International Editorial Council for Combustion, Explosion, and Shock Waves, and as a member of the editorial board for the International Journal of Self-Propagating High Temperature Synthesis. We will now view the video for more details about his research. So the focus of our research is uh, twofold. So we're, uh, on one hand, we're producing new reactive materials, and so we're trying to understand how these materials work and improve on existing materials. And the other part is we're looking at the combustion mechanisms of metallic fuels. When people refer to metals, you usually see construction parts, you see structural pieces, but you don't think about fuels. Powdered metals are very good fuels, especially such metals as aluminum, magnesium, titanium. There, there are multiple applications for our work, and of course, uh, using space propulsion or rocket propulsion as one big application area. Other military-related applications would be missile propellants, explosives, and pyrotechnics. So that's all areas where metals are used. The kind of chemical process is uh, initiating chemical reactions by mechanical energy. And this process has been known uh, for years when people create fire by rubbing uh, two things together. That's mechanical chemistry. So bowl milling is a well-known technique. What we can do now is we can generate a lot of new materials, new components by uh, initiating reacting mechanically. We can choose all kinds of materials to combine. So we can mix them on a different scale. We can mix them on an atomic scale. We can mix them on a scale of a few nanometers, hundreds of nanometers. And depending how we mix these materials, this will affect how fast this programmed reaction will occur. So we're starting from experiments and we're trying to describe in detail what happens with the igniting and burning metal particles. In most commonly, what you would like to do, you would like to achieve the highest heat release very, very rapidly. Once you have that, then you try to design a new material. In conventional energetic materials, metal fuel is mixed with the um, oxidizer, and the oxidizer has to be very aggressive. So typically, chlorinated oxidizers are used, and so they generate a lot of pollution and a lot of chlorine, and getting rid of those oxidizers would be a, a huge advantage for environmental purposes. The approach we use to make the materials is mechanochemistry is now being extended to organic fuels and organic materials. And so we've been able to nitrate toluene, for example, without using any aggressive solvent. So this is a new direction in the work, but if that takes off, it will make a big difference for re removing this waste stream completely. Our work with the students is the, the biggest part of what we do. And uh, it's a very exciting, part, it's a very rewarding part because it's incredible to see how uh, young people mature and change and become independent researchers. It's always good to interact with young people because you learn new things every time and sometimes things you expect to learn something, sometimes things you're completely unexpected, but you learn from them. 
and uh, hopefully they learn from us and uh, some of them we interact with professionally now so it's 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 very exciting Dr. Bloom, would you join me? Dr. Dreesen, would you come forward? Thank you. It's very strong Velcro. First, I'd like to um, thank NJIT Board of Overseers, specific the selection committee, uh, President Bloom, Provost Geek, uh, Senior Vice Provost Davan, for the award. Uh, it's a very uh, great opportunity. <coughs> Looking at the previous recipients in this room, I'm certainly honored to become a part of this distinguished group. Um, joining NJIT faculty in 1999 was one of the best things that happened to me. Uh, working here in this environment uh, gives one enormous freedom in pursuing ideas and thoughts and, and research interests, which has been a great experience uh, for me over the years. Having immigrated here from a different place gives me yet another perspective, and um, I'm tremendously grateful to this country for giving me and my family the opportunity to pursue our dreams. Oops, that was not that strong. <laughs> Um, of course, none of my professional accomplishments would have been uh, possible without support and love uh, I get from my family, and having this family makes me really very lucky. Uh, receiving this award, I'd like to um, thank my colleagues and my students who worked with me all these years and whose efforts and dedication made it possible for all of us to, to learn something new about metal combustion, to make some exciting materials, and also to make our NJIT group a recognized part of a broader international advanced energetics research community. Among many, <clears throat> among many people I have worked with, I'd like to specifically thank, uh, thank Dr. Mir Pashanitz, who's been with me many years, and without whom many of our experiments would not have been possible. So thank you, Mirko, and also thank you for listening to all the crazy ideas that come around in our group, and also for your fair share of contributing to those. Um, most of all, I'd like to thank all of my PhD students, present and past, who contributed most directly to um, generating the research, leading to, among other things, this award. I cannot name you all, but please know I consider myself fortunate uh, for being able to work with you and to contribute to your professional development. Uh, some of our interesting results come from master's thesis and we certainly value master's student participation, so thank to all master's students who work with us, some of whom went on to do PhD. And of course, we're always excited to attract undergrads, and their contribution is particularly appreciated because we know how busy they are with classes and extracurricular activities, and so their work is particularly appreciated there. Um, for all students and audience, I'd like to say, your motivation and academic preparation are the keys to your research success. The only other ingredient is to find a topic and basically commit to it with energy and effort. Every research topic can be exciting and rewarding, and the more you learn and know about something, the more exciting and interesting new knowledge becomes. In the long run, do not get distracted by fashionable buzzwords, out the state of course, but of course keep your eyes open. Uh, some of the most exciting discoveries come 
and occur unexpectedly, and then they open new opportunities, one just needs to be open to see that. I would like to conclude by thanking all my students once again for joining the group, for their interest, support, and for sharing with me some of the best years of your life. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Deason. Uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce our next honoree, uh, Dr. Dale Gary, Distinguished Pro Professor of Physics in the Center of Solar Terrestrial Research. Dr. Gary is also Director of Expanded Owens Valley Solar Array Radio Facility uh, near Big Pine, California. Dr. Gary started a very, very innovative uh, task to capture the solar flares and solar storms through RF waves. Uh, he established the number one solar radio group in the world. He received more than $5 million in NSF funding to build the most advanced instrument in the research area at the expanded Owens Valley Solar Array Facility. After years of effort in building and commissioning the array, this facility is producing beautiful images and very scientifically valuable images of the electromagnetic radiations through the RF waves of the solar storms. Dr. Gary, working with his colleagues at the Big Bear Solar Observatory, are now able to overlay these RF images of electromagnetic radiations, uh, defining the map of solar flares with the near-infrared optical images obtained through the world's highest resolution telescope at the Big Bear Observatory. This work has been at the forefront of the space weather research, and his work has also been featured in the science, a very, very rapid a general publication. It is going to affect understanding the space weather and understanding the solar radiations. It's going to affect our daily life and the sustainability of this earth. And because of that, this particular field is one of the 10 big ideas in the NSF strategic plan. We are very proud to have this group at NJIT doing the cutting-edge research. Now let's view Professor Gary's video. Most people, when they talk about a telescope, they expect to use their eye and look through it at objects in the sky. A radio telescope is very different from that. The primary focus of our research and my research group is to understand how solar flares work in the sun. When the sun produces a solar flare, um, that flare has many impacts on us here on Earth. The particles that are accelerated in the flare can come escape from the sun and come directly to Earth. That can affect spacecraft, can even affect people flying over the poles in uh, polar aircraft routes. And so we want to understand the initiation of the solar flare, the very thing that starts it off. A lot of the effects that are most dangerous to us and our technological systems on Earth are in fact not visible in ordinary light or in other wavelengths that, that we had available. The radio emission is providing us with a way to see what was invisible but yet extremely important. When we designed EOBSA, we were able to make an instrument that specifically for observing the sun can handle all of the um, challenges that observing the sun hands us. The actual telescope is made of all of these individual antennas which are spread over a couple of kilometers, more than a mile across. So each of these small telescopes is acting to create one large telescope. The frequency range of the Owens Valley is 2.5 to 18 gigahertz, so that's quite a wide range of radio frequencies. And so to convert those radio wave measurements into knowledge about the particles requires modeling and theory. 
So what we have done is develop a modeling framework where we can actually create a three-dimensional picture of what's going on in the flare. By making those things visible and allowing us to make the measurements of the environment there, we're able to deduce not only that the flare is occurring, but how important is it going to be in terms of its effects at Earth. All of our technological systems can be impacted by particles and by magnetic fields from the sun. And those effects are sort of lumped together into this term space weather. One of the things that EOPSA does is to look at these space weather events and improve our ability to now cast not only whether they're underway, but how impactful they will be, how strong the effects may be at Earth. And we're hoping that that can lead eventually to forecasting, reliable forecasting, where we're actually able to um, not only say that it's occurring now, but how likely a future event is to occur. Our data are actually used across the world, so many outside users are anxious to get our data and do their own research with it, combine it with other kinds of data from NASA spacecraft and other ground-based instruments. What it can do already is, is really fantastic, but what we envision is something of order hundreds of antennas that will be able to do you know, 100 times what EOPSA can do in terms of science. Dr. Gary, would you come up? Congratulations. Thank you very much, President Bloom and uh, Chairman C. Holtz. Um, I want to sincerely thank you and the Board of Overseers for this honor. And I also want to thank the, uh, the Chair of the Selection Committee, Emil um, Herkert, and the other Selection Committee members, especially Fadi Deek and uh, Don Sebastian and uh, uh, Tom Dewan. Uh, each of you has provided unwavering support to me when I've come to you for help with uh, some problem or other over many years, so I do very much appreciate all of that. Um, hi, Min. Um, I want to thank you for uh, uh, nominating me for the, the award and writing the letter of recommendation, but of course, uh, you've also been a, a great friend and supporter and uh, uh, longer than anyone at NJIT, and I'll be coming back to you in a moment. But, um, I also want to thank Andre Serenko, our uh, the chair of the department, for strongly supporting my nomination. Um, and I'd like to thank the people who kindly wrote me letters of rec uh, recommendation. Uh, Lou Lanzarotti, I'm not sure if he made it, but oh, there he is. I, <laughs> um, yeah, so you've been a huge booster of my career uh, since uh, uh, your days at uh, Bell Labs and then at NGIT after you've uh, come to the Center for Solar Terrestrial Research. And uh, I'm in awe of your accomplishments, and we're all really lucky to have you as our colleague. Appreciate that. Um, uh, my other letter writers who couldn't be here tonight are, include my good friends and colleagues, uh, Tim Bastian and Jim Klimchuk. They may be listening on the, uh, on the uh, streaming video, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know what you wrote, but it must have worked. Thank you. <laughs> um, although um, each of the people uh, directly involved in my being selected for the award um, uh, I've listed, but uh, there's also a log list of others who rightly deserve to share in the award. Uh, first and foremost is my wife, Kyle, who uh, worked to keep our young family supported um, both before and during my graduate school and uh, during the lean years after. Um, I want to uh, 
acknowledge my two sons, Isaac, who's here, and uh, Benjamin. Um, they had to suffer a childhood where dad was uh, often at science meetings or uh, on holidays and birthdays. So um, I appreciate their <laughs> suffrage. Um, my sister Karen made the uh, trip from uh, Michigan to be here. And uh, she was the first in our family to go to college. So uh, she's certainly a role model for me. Uh, my cousin Jean Wicks is also here from Michigan. Uh, we lived in the same neighborhood and learned astronomy together. So um, he followed me in getting a PhD, actually. So that was something unusual for our family. <laughs> um, since the administrative assistants are often left to last, I'm going to flip it around and uh, acknowledge them. Next, uh, Christine Ortel. I'm not sure if Christine is here, but uh, she um, shared with uh, Shell and me the daunting task of initiating a lot of the, uh, of the um, effort to get the EOPSA off the ground. To manage a $5.1 million project is, is not easy. Um, and then, um, Cheryl James came on board right in the middle, had to learn a new job and uh, all of the extra tasks involved with uh, completing the project. So, um, uh, Cheryl, you really perform miracles and uh, handling all the myriad details and freeing me to focus on the big picture. So, thank you very much. Um, then there's Felicia. Um, she served as project manager for EOPSA and uh, has managed all the budgets, the proposal submissions, the, making sure that all the people got paid. It's wonderful to have people paid. The uh, job goes much easier. <laughs> um, so you've really gone the extra mile, and I do appreciate that. Um, I want to thank Andy Girard, the director of the center, who's been uh, entirely supportive whenever I came to ask for a favor or with my handout for funds to tide us over. Um, but when it comes to the success of the EOSA project, uh, no, more, no one deserves more credit than our site manager in California, Shell Nellen. Uh, he's the one who had to convert a lot of plans on paper to physical reality on the ground. So um, uh, thank you, Shell. Um, I also want to talk about the science team. Our group has two research professors, Gregory Fleischman and Jelu Nita. Uh, who are co-equals with me in the research, and uh, they're PI on their own grants as well as co-I on many of mine. So many thanks for all your efforts, especially Jelu's work on the EOPSA control system, which makes the array operation run smoothly. Uh, I have to thank Bing, Bin Chen, the young faculty member in our group whose expertise in radio imaging has enabled all of the wonderful movies and images. Um, he's leading several new science studies with the data and I'm sure you'll be celebrating him at this award someday. Um, I want to thank some colleagues uh, who were helping in, with developing EOPSA, uh, Gordon Herford, Stephen White, Jim McTiernan. They've contributed hugely to the success of, the, of EOPSA. So I want to end with Hymin again, um, who worked with me for 35 years, uh, or 35 years ago when we were at Caltech together. And, uh, then he got a faculty position at some place called NGIT that I'd never heard of. <laughs> but um, uh, I think people have heard of us by now. Um, so with his help, Phil Goody engineered the transfer of Big Bear and Owens Valley to NGIT and led my uh, directly coming here. And uh, so you've been a great friend and help into my career. And I want to thank you especially. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dale. I'm sure the whole world has heard you today at about NJIT. Our final honoree for this evening is Dr. Furjan Nadim, Professor of Biological Sciences. He is also the founding co-director of the Institute of Brain and Neuroscience Research. Excuse me. Okay. Dr. Nadim's work is both at the interface and within the areas of neuroscience and applied mathematics. He is the world-renowned expert on the behavior of central pattern-generating networks of coupled neurons, something that we all have um, in, in our body. And most of the time, we use it, we overuse it, and wonder about that how to 
get along. Dr. Nadim's research is well funded by the National Institutes of Health for conducting electrophysiology experiments and developing computational models to understand how neurons and synapses result in network oscillations in the nervous system and how do they behave, how their properties can be modified by the neuromodulatory substances, or in other words, the drugs. Uh, his research work connects the brain grand challenge as shared and supported by the U.S. White House and five federal funding agencies, including NSF, NIH, DARPA, ARPA, and FDA. Dr. Nadeem has served as reviewing editor of the Journal of Neuroscience, one of the most reputed journal in brain and neuroscience field and the director of the Organization of Computational Neuroscience. He is the senior editor of the Encyclopedia of the Computational Neuroscience since 2014. Unfortunately, Dr. Nadeem is unable to be with us this evening. He is serving as a faculty member at the NeuroBridge 2018 meeting, a nine-day summer school for graduate students and postdocs primarily from Middle East and Mediterranean region. And he's among, a very, uh, among the faculty who are leading neuroscientists, experimentalists, as well as theoretician who will address the fundamental questions of the contemporary neuroscience during this summer school. Dr. Amitabh Bose, professor in the Department of Mathematical Sciences will be accepting the award on behalf of Dr. Nadeem. But first, let's view Dr. Nadeem's video highlighting his accomplishments. The primary goal of my research is to understand how a network of neurons that is anatomically connected to each other can produce a variety of outputs in a dynamic manner that correspond to different behaviors that we have. My research focuses on neural oscillations. These are um, rhythmic activities in the central nervous system that correspond to a variety of behaviors. You know, we have people who have mental disorders or neurological disorders. For example, you could have depression or schizophrenia. And effectively, these are parts of the brain going haywire. For example, in schizophrenia, it's now implicated that the levels of neural oscillations is completely off. What I'm trying to do is go at the basic level and say, okay, in health or disease, what do these things mean? So if it goes wrong, how does that change a healthy brain to an unhealthy brain? My experimental research has been primarily on invertebrate systems, lobsters and crabs, crustaceans in general. Now you say, well, we're humans, we're not squid. It turns out that how this happens is exactly the same, not just in squid and other invertebrates, but in us. And we hope that these lessons can be applied to the circuits that you see in the brain because the connections effectively are very similar between the systems. I've become very interested in the topic of neuromodulation, which is how different chemicals released within the nervous system modify the properties of that network of neurons to change its output from one thing to another. That's what we're trying to understand. How these different pathways that are going within the nervous system that are activated by different drugs and different neuromodulators interact with each other. So the, the traditional pharmaceutical approach to discovering drugs is basically try things and see what works. If you don't know those interactions, you may be doing more harm than good. The more modern approach is to take our understanding of how physiology works in an animal and in humans and try to take those rules 
and figure out what drugs may be doing within the context of our understanding of the science. So it's a much more rigorous approach and that's what biotechnology is. Effectively, it's using science to develop cures, to develop drugs, to develop instruments that can be helpful when things go wrong. Dr. Bose, would you come forward? Um, so, Farzan asked me to make some comments on uh, his behalf. Um, uh, so, I'm going to say that, make his comments and then I'll make a few of my own if you don't mind. So, Farzan writes, um, it is an honor for me to accept the 2018 NGIT Research Prize and Medal. I thank the Board of Overseers and the members of the Prize and Medal Selection Committee for accepting my nomination and crediting me with this distinction. I especially thank Provost Fadi Deek for his support and encouragement. Although I am a nominal recipient, this research award is a testimony to the hard work and accomplishments of the numerous students and postdocs whom I have had the pleasure of advising and the patience and kindness of my scientific collaborators. Of these collaborators, I owe special thanks to my NJIT collaborators who have generously contributed to my research career, Professors Jorge Golawash, Horacio Rothstein and Dirk Bucher in the, Department of in the Department of Biological Sciences, and Professors Amit Bose and Victor Matviev in the Department of Mathematical Sciences. Finally, it is a special honor to receive this award with my esteemed colleagues, Professors Dale Gary and Edward Drazen, whom I greatly admire. Thank you, Farzan Lee. So, um, so I'll take a few minutes to say some things about Farzan. The advantage is I can speak about him which is really nice. Um, for any of you, those of you who know Farzan, he's an extremely humble and modest person. He's a very generous person in terms of everything he does, especially his scientific career. Uh, he won the award in life sciences or biological sciences, but Farzan actually has a PhD in mathematics. Uh, he did, finished his PhD in 1993, and that's when he and I first met. Uh, I was going for a postdoc interview with his PhD advisor, Nancy Capel at Boston University. And when I met Farzan, I asked him, what are you planning on doing? And he said, oh, I'm going to go learn some experiments. And I was like, that's kind of strange, mathematician wanting to go learn experiments. What, what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to go study the leech. I said, the leech? You know, what is that? So he went uh, in 93 to study the leech heart with uh, Ron Calabrese at Emory University. And that's where he learned about central pattern generators, something that Atham uh, mentioned, and it's also present in his talk. And then he went later on to Brandeis to work with Eve Martyr on crabs, the stomatic gastric ganglion. And we were lucky enough to attract Farzan to NGIT in 1998, where he was hired in the mathematics department. And because he was hired in the mathematics department, he was able to bring biology to NGIT. He's, I think, singularly the reason why we have a thriving biology department at NGIT. Uh, many people followed him, uh, some of the members that I mentioned in his, um, that he mentioned in his speech, but it's, it's really a testimony to his training as a mathematician as well as a biologist. He speaks both languages that allowed him to do what he's done here at NGIT. I just want to share with you uh, a little bit about what it's like to do research with Farzan. He and I have written many papers together and grants together. Um, and it would typically start like this. I would go to his office, and Far even before I would sit down, Farzan would say, hey, Amit, I have a very simple question to ask you. And this question is a question that he had thought about for a long time, boiling down biology, 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 till it became a mathematical question, something I could understand. 
And even though it was a simple question, it usually took us one or two years to finish this, to answer it. And this is what he would tell me and he would tell all of his students. We're doing basic science. It takes time. You might not see the applications of our work today, tomorrow, or a year from now, but you will see it eventually. And that, that notion that we're at a university and we need time to do our research is one that he is very, very insistent that that message get out. Um, now when I go to his office, I just dread that he's going to ask me a simple question, because I don't know if I want to spend one or two more years trying to answer everything he asks. But uh, in closing, he, he would like me to uh, also thank two people who are extremely important to him, have really um, are the backbone of his life, his wife, Isabel Sofer, and his daughter, Roxana Nadim. Roxana Nadim. So thank you on behalf of her son. When my grandchildren go down to the dock to do, to do their crabbing, I have lots of stories to tell them after watching that video, especially when they grab for your finger. <laughs> um, as I mentioned at the outset, uh, it was it's really a privilege to participate and see the wonderful work that's been done and why NJIT has moved to new ranks in, in the uh, panoply of uh, universities in, in our country and, out, and beyond our country. And uh, the work that we've seen in, uh, is particularly touching to me uh, when, when I think back to what our university was and how we've moved into this research area. And Emil Harkert has been a key mover in recognizing that long before I did. Emil has been on the board of Overseers for 30 years. He's the uh, chairman emeritus of the board of Overseers. And uh, Emil, I'd like to ask you to come up and uh, tell us more about your thoughts. Uh, you get to close when, you have, when you're long in the tooth, like I am. So, uh, But I want you to appreciate one aspect of what was kind of glossed over in the presentations today, and that is the job description of these researchers. How many of you in, in, sitting in the audience would take a job description that says, we want you to do this research, we're going to give you students because you're a master teacher and you can use them to further your research. But you have to write the grants to get the funds to fund your research. That's how you will get paid. And that's what these researchers have done. They've taken their brilliance, written the grants, got the federal government in a competitive situation to say, hey, you at NJIT, you're going to get the money to do this because we like your idea. And if they don't agree, the idea doesn't get funded and the research doesn't happen. So when we see the output of the research that has been done here and recognize, too, that it's not only economic, not only intellectual brilliance that causes it to happen, but also a cumin on how to write the grant, how to work the politics, how to do the whole thing that brings this whole thing together. And so I think we want to put our hands together to these three brilliant people who are advancing our state of knowledge in these very significant areas. Thank you for the job you've done. I want to also thank the committee that I chair um, uh, for their diligent and enthusiastic efforts, their time spent reading all your research, and their insightful comments in coming up with the recommendations for this award this year. It's made my job very easy, and so they've done, I think, an outstanding job this year. 
I would also like to thank all those who have made today's ceremony, Jackie Rhodes and Eladio and their team, a success. And I look forward to sharing the great pride of this experiment experience again next year. This concludes our final program. I invite you to expend, extend personal congratulations to each of the awardees and our reception that follows immediately. Thank you very much.